Good evening, uh, family. How you doing? This is your boy, Pastor Small, reaching out to you, um, sharing uh, in this virtual Bible study. Thank you so much for chiming in and sharing with us. We are here to continue the conversation about protecting our peace, how we keep a level head and how we maintain both our mental health, our wellness, and our spirituality in this season of coronavirus. Grateful for, again, this panel uh, breaking us out. We're just going to let them shout each other out. Um, you all remember, but just go ahead and shout yourselves out um, so folks can remember who you are. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. I am Reverend Sharice Parker Freeman, and thank you for joining us again tonight. And good to see you in virtual world. <laughs> Hello, uh, good to see everyone. Thank you again for uh, tuning back in. This is the Reverend Dr. Nicole McDonald. Good evening, everybody. This is your favorite executive pastor of New Calvary Baptist Church, uh, Reverend Byron Harris, and I am grateful to be with you all again this week and excited about the conversation. We had such a stimulating dialogue on last week. We're definitely looking forward to continuing and kicking it to another level on tonight. So thank you so much. Push your likes, share, make sure you let your friends know what's going on at the New Calvary Church and be a part of the social media team here at New Calvary. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah well, I want y'all to, if y'all can, with the thumbs down, uh, about that sweater he got on. We're going to roll with that. And, uh, and I keep him Y'all can talk about it. Say, yo, you got some dirt on your sweater. Up, <laughs> you know, work that out. That's um, called Shekinah Life. <laughs> it's good. It's the good. Glory of God. Um, this is Bible study. And um, somebody reminded me uh, of that. So why don't we just open up first in a word of prayer and Amen. then we'll get started. Okay. God gracious. We love you and thank you. We are grateful for this time in which we share together. So God just continue to help us to build and to create opportunity and moments where we might be able, uh, to help and to minister to, uh, a broad audience of people, uh, who are looking to understand this moment and this season. Watch over us. Use us for your purpose and your glory in all things. We say thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So um, we're here to part two of uh, protecting our peace and what we're looking to do. Um, and so we're going to just kind of jump into it. The last time we spoke, we talked a lot about, um, you know, kind of understanding where people are, trying to feel out and understand the, the spiritual aspect of what was taking place. Um, we thank you and appreciate all of your comments and stuff. And we're going to kind of continue to do that tonight. So if you have comments to share, definitely post them and we'll do our best to kind of share with you and kind of lift them up and create conversation tonight. Um, but the last time we spoke, we really kind of, kind of narrow things down in terms of, you know, understanding that the church really does have a role in this moment. Um, that the church really is looking to uh, create or, or what the church is looking to create uh, in this moment. And so we're going to push these theologues a little bit different. Um, as much as they are chaplains, they are chaplains in the sight of, of doing theological work um, and wellness uh, for people. So we're going to push them just a little bit tonight uh, and see where the conversation takes us. Um, and so... I'm going to kind of start uh, and just lay this question out that uh, panel in light of <laughs> in light of the recent adjustments that people have had to make in terms of ministry, um, in terms of helping people, what the church has had to do in terms of helping people find their peace in this conversation. Um, do you think the church uh, was well prepared or unprepared or not as prepared for this particular moment? I mean, because in 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 defense, nobody right. expected this kind of thing to happen. I mean, who? I mean, you know, this is. I, I'm and I'm not being funny when I say this. This was a plague of biblical proportion, <laughs> like literally. So, um, so in, in how do you feel the church has fared or responded or needed to? Uh, you know, what what do you what are your thoughts on how prepared the church is, Doctor McDonald? Let's 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 kind of work our way back. Well, I believe that the church was prepared in the sense of, especially looking at the black church and the black church theology. 
right? So when we think of the theology of the black church, we think of hope, we think of celebration in spite of what we're going through. And so that in and of itself has given the black church an already powerful message of hope and celebration despite what we're going through. So theologically, black church, we're on it because this is what we do day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. We're going, we're going on, <laughs> or, okay. Okay. I, I I struggle with that, and and I struggle with the idea of being ready only because, um, as a nation, we weren't ready. Right. Like when you talk about being ready, and so when you talk about readiness and preparedness to dealing with traumas, I think we 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 have some we have some foreground as Black church worshipers and people of color. Uh, however, I think also when you talk about ready for this particular pandemic. I struggle with if we were really ready or not. And and what I mean by that is um, when the argument is about whether we should be open or not, and that's our right to worship, I think that is a misnomer of what it means to have a separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. And I think that the argument that took place in North Carolina and has resulted in a lot of arguments in churches is this is a public health issue, right. not necessarily a what's your faith issue. And I don't know if I'm answering the question or not, but I don't know if we are ready to really delve into that space of what it means to, and I, I like the position that we have taken as a church of saying, yes, you may be releasing us to go back to 50% or whatever, but we're going to do what's in the best interest of our congregation, mm -hmm. the age of our congregation, the population that we're serving and who it is that we're looking and that we're so grossly affected more so than the regular. Then I think mm -hmm. that's where we see the readiness on our behalf by the same token. I think we were blindsided. I think that we were, it was like we were, we, we really weren't believing that this would ever happen. You know, it was one of those moments where it's like, you know, well, yeah, it happens in the Bible day. You know, we hear those plagues about in the Bible day, the frogs that happened in the Bible day, the river turned to blood. That was the Bible day. We don't see or think that it can happen in today's time. And, and this has been proof that it can. And it did. Mm -hmm. And it has. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, to the question, was the church prepared? I think spiritually in a lot of aspects, yes. Um, because we have just historically we've always been people who, you know, we know how to, to pray. We know. And so I almost chuckle when someone says, you know, it's praying time, right. you know, and I'm like, well, when has it not, not been, been. Right. <laughs> right. Right. you know, mm -hmm. we, you know, from, you know, we can search history and look at all of these different movements and things that have happened where particularly again, the black church, where we, where we know how to galvanize and come together um, and support and help one another. And so we can talk about bad theology, good theology, um, but in times like these, people are just looking for hope. They're mm -hmm. looking for something to latch on to, whether mm -hmm. it's good or bad, um, in terms of those of us who kind of, you know, know how to exegete the scripture and look at it a little bit differently. Um, in terms of preparedness, emergency preparedness, I, I have to agree that we were not prepared for that. And then it makes me think that part of the church, we focus so much on the spiritual aspect and not the totality of what is going, what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, Noah didn't wait until it started raining to start building the ark, but how do we start saying, okay, now we know that we need to have emergency preparedness in place. That is no more just um, coming in and, worshiping on Sunday and, you know, shouting and, and all of those things have their perspective places. Um, but also how do we prepare people that when this does happen, that the church is on the forefront, not just in terms of spirituality, but getting that information out so that people are understanding, you know, you're hearing on the news, um, you know, the president is saying, you know, take this. <laughs> and, you know, and so people are wrestling with, well, should I do it? Should I not do it? You know, um, you have, people who battle with lupus right in our congregation and they're not getting their medication. And so then as social justice, you know, being on the front for, forefront and being the advocates, how do we, you know, step up and have that voice during the pandemic as opposed to falling by the wayside? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Right. right. It's, it's, um, it's a very interesting dynamic because in, in traditionally, right. The church universal, and I'm not talking about just the African American church, the church, universal has been for the most part reactionary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right we we you know an event happens and we respond you know mm -hmm. what is the church's response to a thing mm -hmm. and so i think what a lot of us are learning mm -hmm. 
is what it means to be prepared, mm-hmm. um, particularly on a practical level. Like when you talk about, okay, well, what does it mean to have contingency to, you know, you got bills coming mm-hmm. and you don't have as much yeah. in terms of people giving and revenue stream and those kinds of things. Um, you know, how do you minister in moments such as these mm-hmm. when you can't necessarily reach or, or get physical contact to your membership? And it's causing, I think, a lot of people, hopefully, prayerfully, to really kind of rethink church, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And rethink how it goes and rethinks how it is presented mm-hmm. in a sense that um, is much more um, relatable and effective in the current society in which we function. Um, I think... To your point, one of the things that is the African American in the African American tradition, particularly with uh, forty five minus one in the White House, <laughs> we do not have like we have not drank that tea, right? Mm-hmm. Yo, like mm-hmm. yo, this drug, you know, just right. because the president's taking right. it, we gonna be good. We should. <laughs> that's not where right. we live. I mm-hmm. mean, like our our level of confidence in this guy <laughs> right. is on. Zero. Zero. <laughs> right. So we like, yo, you know, right. and if anybody's watching this, don't take, you know, right. hydroxychloroquine to fix your situation. That is not right, or Clorox in your veins right. or None of Lysol, that. you None know, of that. that is not. We all know at this stage of the game, mm-hmm. you know, but um, I think it does, you know, to your point, kind of speak to, you know, those challenges as well. Um, it as we talk about protecting peace, right? Um, Peace is a very theological term. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? As we talk about, you know, what it is to be, you know, people of faith, it's a very theological term. And so let me ask you guys, how would you, or how do you think the church should uh, help to understand or people to understand the spiritual side of peace right now? Um, and maintaining and preserving their peace. How, 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 how do you articulate that um, for you guys theologically? Um, how does God help us find peace in this season? Right? How do we, how do we search that? Right. Mm-hmm. So, Reverend Parker Freeman, let's we'll, we'll go the other way now. Okay. All right. Um, in terms of preserving our peace, I think for me is to understand that faith is. Um, the promise that God gives us of the things that we have not seen. So faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so the thing that kind of keeps me going personally is knowing that in my faith journey, that there are still plans and the promises of God mm-hmm. that are still. So the pandemic does not prohibit or stop the promises of God. And so that is the hope that, you know, I look forward to. That is the, um, kind of the the central theme of how I am navigating through this whole process, Mm -hmm. knowing that there are still um, plans, there are still things that God has in store for me or for us that have not come to fruition yet. Um, But that kind of keeps me centered and grounded, knowing that God is in control of all things. And that if in that, even in this, that I can't negate the power and the presence of God. And so allowing God to be God and do what God is, you know, is going to do, but also to rethink how I, how I look at faith. And so one of the things that I've been wrestling with is that, that there are innocent people who are, who've, who've been impacted by this whole thing, um, that there are <clears throat> lives who are suffering because of this, whether people are losing jobs or whether they have died because of COVID-19. And so, but then there's yet. For us, we say, okay, well, this is a faith and we're hopeful, but there are innocent people who are impacted. So that's mm-hmm. kind of where I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling mm-hmm. with what that, you know, what that looks like. But just knowing that there, there's a hope and there's a future is how I'm kind of mm-hmm. maintaining and preserving. Mm-hmm. For me, theologically, um, taking a look at what peace really means, um, as Pastor Small has stated, peace is not something that is. It, it's something that has to be an embodiment. Mm-hmm. Let me use that word. You have to embody 
peace. Mm -hmm. And so and with the, the idea of what it means to embody peace, particularly I'm thinking of scripture that says that he will give you peace that will pass if all understanding, right? Mm -hmm. And so that means no matter the situation, we as people of color have always had to cultivate that kind of peace, no matter what the situation is. You know, through the halls of slave ships, there was mm -hmm. still a spirit that we were connected to that gave us ability to sustain and to continue to grow and to continue to move, to build a nation on blood, sweat, and tears for generation after generation to be able to be able to engage a society that has never treated us fairly. Let's, let's be clear. This is not the first time we've had been we've been treated unfairly in this world of things have been stacked against us in an unfavorable way. That's been the narrative of people of color uh, all of our lives. And so with that, there's always been a big mama that has been able to connect to a peace and, and a calm that was provided that we didn't know how she got it. Now, mm -hmm. from the black church perspective, it has been a vehicle that has happened through spirituality, right? Mm -hmm. So it's been through through going to church, singing hymns, being reminded of those songs of the church that restore our faith, of those hymns of the church that restore our faith. But I've what I've come to realize through chaplaincy is that peace can also be cultivated outside of the religious set setting. And what I mean by that is that we can find peace on in, in, in nature. Mm -hmm. We can find peace and calm in other spaces in our lives. And that's what we're having to rely on now because I think back to my childhood for me growing up, if you didn't go to church, you won't go into heaven, right? That, and, and that was a joke, y'all, but that was how my mother reared us, is that you go to church on Sunday because that's what you do, and that's how we connect it to our spiritual walk. And I used to think about the people who I would see getting in their canoes in our neighborhood, getting ready to go out to the, to the ocean or getting ready to go to rivers and lakes and streams. Then one day I moved away from home and I lived in an area where we did a lot of things outside in nature. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, wow, you meet God on the middle of the lake. You meet God when you're taking a hike. You meet God in spaces. So I think that as we talk about this peace that we're looking to cultivate, this is causing us an opportunity to cultivate our peace in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I just, I think that's kind of where we, at least that's where I see peace being something different now, and theologically. I want to co-sign on what you're saying that um, the church has to use both language, both religious language and mm, spiritual language. Yeah, yeah. So peace, like Pastor was saying, is a theological construct is a theological term um but the things that bring you peace such as um here's an example that in this season we have to be gracious towards ourselves and others well grace that's a theological that's a religious term but on the flip side it's be kind mm -hmm. and so the church has to not only use the religious language but then the alternative language um, to open the conversation to believers and non-believers and people who are struggling at this mm -hmm. point. Um, it's important that we open our language and um, not just speak about religion, but speak about spirituality. So yes, mm -hmm. finding God that now the church is closed, but we're still having church. Right. You know, the church is closed, but God is still all around. Mm -hmm. So we need to find ways to meet God other than inside the four walls mm -hmm. of the church. Right, right. Now, when, uh, and I think when you talk about um, peace in, in understanding, you know, and kind of operating, um, I kind of take that same I, idea, right, or concept of peace that I kind of apply to joy, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, joy is this, this, this sense of being, right? Mm -hmm. Happiness is circumstantial, right. Right? Mm -hmm. right? So what's happening makes me happy or what does not make me happy or unhappy and those kinds of things. But regardless of the environment, mm -hmm. there's this joy, right? right? Mm -hmm. right yeah. Based upon yeah. relationship, based yeah. upon connection, based upon, as the song says, this blessed assurance, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so I look at peace that same way, mm -hmm. right? That the circumstance may be, right. you know, stressful, right. but what is the peace, right? Mm -hmm. um, or the place that centers, mm -hmm. right? What is the place that we find that ultimately centers us um, to not lose it, right? Mm -hmm. Or to get so caught up in what's happening around us that we forget, mm -hmm. right? Um, that God is still able, that God mm -hmm. still has. Um uh, Jennifer Blackwell, one of our trustees, said, you know, that this this circumstance hasn't sh shaken or taken her faith. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. That that whole idea. What is the thing that gets you grounded? Because um, to your point, um, Reverend Sharice, 
in this moment, there's still that tension, though, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? There's still right. that tension of, you know, and, and some of us were taught at an early age, well, you don't go around questioning God, don't ask God why, mm-hmm. whatever, right. but moments like this can say, yo, God, what? Right. You know, like, right. God, for mm-hmm. real, right. Right. you know, God, what are you doing? Where right. you at? Absolutely. You know, uh, why, mm-hmm. you know, is this happening? Right. And, um, And I think it, and I don't know if I said this last week or not, but I think it's interesting because nobody has the hold, Mm -hmm. right, Mm -hmm. Um, theologically to be like, well, God, why is this happening to me? Mm-hmm. Right? right, because hold on, it's happening to everybody, everybody. Right. right? You know what I'm saying? Everybody's right. in that boat, right. 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 right? right, right, everybody's on that, everybody's <laughs> on that, everybody's on that spot. Um, so, um, so we, as we talk about um, peace and helping people, that that becomes the church's role to to find this balance to find uh, help people, you know in the chaos of whatever their situation is and circumstance may be what is the place where they can find peace. What kind of practical ways um, can you share with, with folks who are watching um, that will help uh, kind of reduce stress um, that kind of put things and help people put things in a proper perspective, how to lean towards peace and things of that nature. And we want to remind you guys don't feel, you know, you know, come on and, you know, if you want to, um, make some comments or whatever, go ahead and post your comments and we'll try to address those as quickly as possible. Mm-hmm. I, so we'll switch it up. I, so, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, we'll, start, we'll start in the middle. We'll start in the middle. Right, right, right. Um, one of the, when we're talking about protecting our peace, one of the things that I think about often is protecting our mental health. Because in a lot of instances, all of us have different issues that we face, whether um, openly and people know about it or whether we do it privately. Um, Mental health is something that is very uh, prevailing in our community as people of color and faith people. Um, And so there's a commercial that comes on television, and many of you have probably already seen it, and it talks about how to navigate working with your children through this through this pandemic. And one of the things is, or it's very practical, but I wanted to just lift up. The one thing that, one of the things that they suggest that we do, and this is from Forbes Live, uh, an article on Forbes Live, it says, cut back on uh, news and social media intake. Mm-hmm. In other words, be very intentional about what streams of media we reach out to, mm-hmm. and also how we take it in. Because what can happen is if you get on CNN, on that newsreel, or on Fox News' newsreel, and you're seeing it every 30 minutes and it just keeps rewinding, yeah, yeah. We, can, we can become panicked and, 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 you know, right. and scared. Whereas if we say, well, you know what? I'm going to do the nightly news from 6.30 to 7 or whatever time it comes on, and that's going to be my news feed, or I'll give it an hour. I'll mm-hmm. do local news and national news, and that's it. We can control how much we're taking in and how that will reduce the anxiety of just being on a constant uh, stream of getting too much information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I, I was just going to share. Okay. Um, I was going to say that um, some practical ways is to ensure that we are deliberate about Mm -hmm. Mm self-care, realizing that self-care is is sacred. Um, And so carving out time to say, you know, every Wednesday, this is my time from two to three o'clock. This is my time. And make no apologies for that. Mm -hmm. You know, don't feel guilty because you're not answering your phone because you're not responding to a text message or you're not on social media, but this is my time. And realizing that interruptions do happen. Mm -hmm. Um, but being intentional to say, I'm going to reclaim my time, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm Mm -hmm. going to get my time back Mm -hmm. and, and it's okay. Um, I'm a reality TV junkie. Um, sometimes. Uh-huh. And, so, <laughs> and so I was uh-huh. watching, um, there's a, there's a, uh-huh. a it's called Fox Soul. And so uh-huh. they're like, they're like, <laughs> for, but they're like four celebrities. And most of us know Nene Leakes from uh-huh. Housewives of Atlanta. Uh-huh. And so there was this, there was this article, um, about her, the need for her to go to therapy after the taping and the production of this final season. And there were black women bashing her for going to therapy, you know, mm-hmm. why is she going to go to therapy now, this, that, and the other. And so part of that is knowing what you need to do in this mm-hmm. process, whatever works for you is what works for you. And so we shouldn't shame other people, but you know, um, I find myself cooking more. It's enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Riding my bike with my basket is mm-hmm. enjoyable. Uh, cause pastor had jokes about my basket. Um, and so again, just carving out that time and being intentional 
every, you know, every time that I set that I am mm-hmm. doing that self care for me. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, I want to share with you guys, uh, Dr. Kenneth Doka. Mm-hmm. He has four rituals. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> and so uh, it's practical to have rituals and routines. Mm-hmm. So he talks about rituals of continuity. And that's doing things um, that you would have loved to do or making a dish, like uh, Sharice was saying, that it's about knowing what used to give you joy before mm-hmm. this pandemic and still trying to have a ritual or a routine of that, whether it's working out. So you can't go to the gym anymore, mm-hmm. but you used to work out, you know, three times a week. Mm-hmm. Well, figure out how you're going to work out in your own home mm-hmm. or how you're going to, you know, go walking instead of, of, of running, you mm-hmm. know, on the treadmill. Mm-hmm. So that's a ritual of continuity. Um, there's rituals of transition. Mm. So Reverend Sharice and I were talking about <laughs> that, you know, during this process, there was a little bit of, of grief going on and sadness. <laughs> and uh, we knew that we turned the corner, the ritual of transition when we started cleaning out closets right. mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, cleaning out drawers and cleaning out rooms. Um, there's also rituals of affirmation. Uh, Reverend Sharice and I were talking about like journaling. You can, you know, write a letter, write a poem. Cause a lot of us are grieving our previous life, mm-hmm. whatever that was, we miss it. Mm-hmm. You know, we miss going out to the restaurants and things like that. So uh, journaling about what you miss, the things that you love and the things that you hope for in the future. Um, and lastly, he has the rituals of intensification mm-hmm. and that's connecting with others. And I know a lot of us are mm-hmm. picking up the phone, FaceTime and our mm-hmm. family, our friends, you know, talking to our families more than we ever did. Uh, and that's that connectedness that we're craving. So those are the four rituals or four routines um, that that's practical that we can do today. Mm-hmm. And also, might I add, um, watching what we eat. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw something today that was talking about um, making sure that a lot of what we eat kind of triggers our level of anxiety or depression or, mm-hmm. you know, those things. So just being mindful of our intake, you know, kind of getting rid of all of the snacks and all of the other, yeah. you know, <laughs> junk food and all, and all of those things. But sometimes we can kind of manage and control a little bit better, not to negate, it's, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, but not to negate those who really suffer or have re- true mental health issues. But some of that is our intake. What are we feeding our bodies mm-hmm. and what are our bodies craving that we can kind of handle and get some more, you know, fruit or something of the sort. So, yeah. When we were talking about simple rituals, two mm-hmm. simple rituals that I used to share a lot of times as a trauma chaplain, with the nursing staff and with other persons who are experiencing trauma. One is breathing, mm-hmm. just being intentional about your breathing. Okay. Um, and there are apps that you can get that will help you breathe and it will count for you. Yes. So just taking time to do deep cleansing mm-hmm. breaths, that does a great deal of getting oxygen into your blood, which will also reduce anxiety. But not only that, but we as uh, faith believers, Christians, struggle with the term meditation. You know, mm-hmm. we think that's for the Buddhist, or we think that's for <laughs> right. the Hindu, or we think that's for somebody. But meditation mm-hmm. is simply a form of prayer. Mm-hmm. Let's just put that out there. Right. And if you have never meditated before, I'm going to encourage you all to go and get, or if you have in your form, your home, your favorite smell, aromatherapy candle, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Get a candle. It's lavender. Whatever that whatever that candle will be, uh, center yourself in your space, whether that's in your bathroom, in the in the tub, or if that's you know at, in your in your bed, and all you have to do if you focus on centering is to light the candle, and focus on the flicker. Mm. Right. So you light the candle, you turn off all the lights and you just focus on the flicker of the candle. Watch the candle dance and practice deep breathing. And as you do that, you will cleanse yourself, you'll cleanse your spirit and you'll find out that when you're finished with it, you'll actually be in a different space, whether it's a space of Zen or whether it's a space that Jesus Christ has met you in a very private right. place. So that's that's a suggestion of things that we used to do mm-hmm. in the hospital with our nursing staff. You know, maybe next time we'll do uh, Lectio Divina. Mm-hmm. Next okay. time we'll, we'll run through that. And, yeah. and, you know, this is Bible study. Right. We're talking yeah. about spiritual practices that might or help. Sage. Maybe yeah. maybe we'll do that. We got that's the sage. Saying, so. yeah. just, that's we'll a little fire. <laughs> <Right. Well, laughs> Maybe we'll, we'll go they've that been they've been itching. Sage. That's a real project. They have been itching to light my sage for a minute. 
Um, you know, you, you and, were pastor, and right? You, you and according to Jamal, have, uh, according to some preachers, <laughs> right? Um, I don't have spirituality. So yes, flex your demeanor. That's on our to do list next time. We'll, we'll run through one. But remember to laugh. What we're, yeah, we're doing this now. Is good. Make this sure, is make sure you laugh. laugh. That is yes. good yes. for the soul. Yeah. Laugh at I know yourself. that the John yes. little boy. Yes. The little, the little, <laughs> the little, the little preacher. Doing homework. Yo, yes, that insane. Was, that was He's funny. hilarious. Y'all know so what many. we're talking about. You need to get on I'm Facebook. Such a good yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he, um, one of the things that I think this season does, um, and I'm talking personally and sharing personally, I think one of the things the season does, and it ought to encourage us to do these kinds of reflections, I think that what it causes us to reflect on is how much money we wasted. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I, when, because, and, and I'm, and I'm just keeping it 100 because of the times I don't eat out now, mm-hmm. you know, when I look at my bank, I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> yes. I look at, I, I, and it's, and it's awesome. I mean, it's just like, really? Um, right. What to, to Reverend Sharice's point, what we eat, what we're eating, mm-hmm. uh, what we take in, um, so how much money we're spending, what we're taking in, and the stuff we do with the extra time, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Because there is so much extra time. There's time to meditate. Mm-hmm. There's time to pray. There's time to read. Mm-hmm. There's time to write. There's time to mend relationships. Mm-hmm. That kind of stuff is the kind of stuff when you talk about protecting your peace instead of just sitting around talking about, and, and, and here's what I'm saying. As opposed to giving in mm-hmm. to the to the setting, right? Well, ain't nothing to do, so I'm gonna just sit here and do nothing mm-hmm. and lose your mind, right? right? Then define those places to right. reflect on, right? You so, say, you know what? I might need to start a bank account. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? And put this extra <laughs> money that I'm not eating, you know, you mm-hmm. know, chilies every day or whatever. Right. And put that away and watch that grow and then do something else with that. Or, you know, I can, you know, reach out to people I haven't spoken to in a while to make those kinds of connections. And, you know, I can write, I can, I can read, you know, stuff that I have on my shelves that I've been promising to do. There's a lot of different things that can be done with the time mm-hmm. um, at, at that, that when you realize the time that is in, and I'm using spiritual language in terms of being stewards, mm-hmm. Right, that we really kind of wasted, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying, and and not done the best we could with it. So there's some moments that we can really look at. Um, Sister Heidi Farrell said, you know, one of her things is the virtual worship kind of reminds her and kind of keeps her, you know, in a sense of you know continuing, you know, like there's a norm, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. th- that's the other thing uh, to find the norm. Um, Reverend Brown said, um, when you know. Uh, your audience, you can speak to their need, right? And I, the reason why that, that grabbed me um, is because I want to put this out here as we continue to talk about protecting peace and finding ways to do that. How do you think, um, not as the church has to not only gather information, what are we, what are we laughing at? I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. no. well, as the church only <laughs> gather information, um, but implement mm-hmm. new ways, right? Mm-hmm. As the church, what do you think we're talking about in terms of implementing new ways uh, to do ministry in this new environment. Because here's the reality, people, here's the reality everywhere. Ministry is going to be have to be done in new ways. Mm-hmm. If folks have not gotten that yet, um, you know, that's that's for real. Um, old time religion is going to have a new face. Man. Yeah. Um, and the Lord dropped in my spirit um, last week when I was preparing the sermon. We're going to have to talk and teach this old book with a new cover. Mm. And so what does that mean? And so how how do we, you know, what what, what new ways of doing ministry do you guys see, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of coming forth as a result mm-hmm. of this thing? Um, for me, one of the things that came to mind in terms of implementing new ministry is that we need to look at diversifying ministry more. Mm-hmm. And so, um, for example, you know, no tea, no shade, but a lot of ministries have, you know, a, a older generation. And so being intentional about, okay, what does that look like now? Like if you are at a certain age and you can't come out because of COVID-19 or you're still, you have, you know, a compromised immune system, but what does that look like to have some younger, some younger faces, a younger presence, um, or diversification of gifts? Um, there are people who have such a broad, 
um, gift or knowledge or skill set that they can bring to the table. Um, it, because again, even when we talk about emergency preparedness, like we need the nurse or the doctor or that person who has that background to be able to come and give us the information um, accurately. And so looking at how we can diversify ministries, I think is one of the things. I also think there's really no right or wrong way to, to kind of do ministry at this point. I think kind of, I think kind of whatever you come up with mm -hmm. is kind of like, let's try it and be right. as creative as possible. Right. Um, so I think that's one of the things that we have to be open to the possibilities of creating and rediscovering God in a new way, mm -hmm. you know, rediscovering what does that look like? Mm -hmm. You know, um, because I think that we can get so caught up on tradition that we place the limitations on God and what God is really trying to do. Mm -hmm. And so there are moments like this that have to kind of happen for us to say, okay, regroup. And I think last year during the retreat, pastor kept saying back to basics, back to basics. Like it was like a, a running theme. Mm -hmm. And I think now we're at that point, you know, you weren't speaking prophetically or maybe you were speaking maybe prophet. Were. I think Come you were on. speaking prophet. Well, that's not the head of the <laughs> but 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 now mind. but here we are and so like you said we have to reteach rediscover and recreate so I think that's kind of where we are I, I think as a people we need to start and, and a way we can do it effectively let me let me start it that way is looking at what ministries we are a part of and what ministries and, and how they function and then how can we be compliant with what is the new space that we're in now. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. I got off the phone. I had a conversation. I'm putting on Front Street with Sister Woodley <laughs> yesterday. And we were talking about how this was going to work with us coming to do parking hey, lots, to, 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 how to do the <laughs> how to do the parking praise. But what role would the ushers play mm -hmm. in cars coming on the lot? Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a new way because the outer courts ministry is going to direct the cars onto the lot in a new way. So the cars will, will not be able to not park in the way that they were normally <laughs> supposed to park. So we're going to park in a new way. The ushers are going to have a different function, even in how the cars are getting on the on the, the lot. But then even in our worship, it's going to look different because the engagement is going to be different. Mm -hmm. And so then how does that mean if you're going to have a person, not saying that we're doing it, but if you were to have a person to do a welcome, what does that look like mm -hmm. at post COVID-19? Right. Mm -hmm. What does uh, hospitality look look like post COVID-19 because now I got to be intentional about making sure that I'm staying six feet away. Mm -hmm. So how do I extend a sense of hospitality when I can't come into close proximity to you? Mm -hmm. So how can I make you feel, how can we create an atmosphere that makes people feel welcome, even though I have to be mindful of our distance for safety purposes. And I think that's going to be a charge, not only of the pastor and the staff, but that's going to be a charge of the membership mm -hmm. because we are all, I'm just going Baptist polity since we are in Bible study, we are all ministers of the gospel, mm -hmm. right? right? Because we proclaim and proclaim profess to be Baptist believers, we are all ministers and we all have a responsibility to take this seriously as to how we're going to push this Christ agenda forward in these, and I don't like the term, uncertain times. Right. So what does that look like? And I'm just interested to see the feedback. So check the line and see what they're saying <laughs> about... <laughs> <laughs> and see how you does your phone, ministry you right so so, so you if you comments. so if you are a trustee how do you effectively entrust the, the what it is you're called to do as far as the funds and the resources if you're a deacon how do you operate in be in connected connection with the community pushing mm -hmm. the agenda of the church forward if you're in the choir how do you sing to the glory and power of God but still maintain safe distance so that people will experience God's presence even in your ministry now that it's been affected by how you do it so it's just it's those kind of things are what we really have mm -hmm. to deal with and we have to struggle with and it's a good struggle right I, that, that that i'm thinking right. it's a needed struggle right. because i think with every change and with every move of god with every elevation that struggle has to take place mm -hmm. in order for us to see god in a new way yes. right. so. just, well, just get just before you go just a real quick comment you asked about comments um Anjane moore said the devil is a lie i will not be without snacks <laughs> what? So, just let that's, you know. that's what it was. Well, Help, there's a that? lot of hearts they following that. that. Right. There's a lot of hearts that. following Help that right now. Snacks. Throw away so, the honey buns, the honey peas, throw the it out. Bees, you don't need that. You can right. a nice little healthy popcorn, you know. Right. But 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 to that point, I think you know, in terms of self-care, is to maybe treat yourself. Right. You know, so once you've worked out and you've been eating healthy all week, on Thursday, Anjane, treat yourself to a honey bun or Twinkie, <laughs> you know, a ho-ho, I don't know, something, you know. That's funny. Pound cake. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, well, you know, well, or, or it's just the Johns well, can, can bake uh, us a cake. I'm sorry. <laughs> what I was going to say about uh, the church is that um, I, I, I hope, my, my hope and prayer is that the church 
will move from this event centered ministry mm -hmm. where everything we're just getting ready for the next event, the next anniversary, the next whatever, and that it becomes more community oriented. That yes, we can have this event, but how is this event going to help the community, mm -hmm. not just inside the four walls of the church? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I, I hope right. comes from this pandemic, more community-based ministry. You, you know what I think is really going to happen is you're going to see, um, and I know how this is going to sound, and so I'm down to put the challenge out there for y'all, but you're going to see who really cares about ministry. Mm -hmm. because you won't see a whole lot of accolades, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It won't be doing stuff to be seen mm -hmm. or to be in the forefront mm -hmm. or, you know, it's going to be, you know, stuff that we're doing it just to make it function, mm -hmm. stuff to make it work, stuff to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And it's not about, well, somebody acknowledged me or somebody gave me the plaque and, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing, you know, and I'm saying those things have their place, but, you're talking about ministry going forward. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be about like like to your point, you know, in the parking lot. It's not going to be about, you know, yo, I got on this outfit. <laughs> right, right. right. You right. know what I'm saying? It's going to be about yo, what is the task? Right, right. And right. to do the task. Right. Um, and I think that's going to really kind of shift, mm -hmm. hopefully very prayerfully, to people who aren't not churched or seeking persons. Because it's going to look different, mm -hmm. right? It's not about no longer about a comparison of what I believe I can't do or what I don't have or what I'm, you know, or what, you know, but to say, oh, look, people are serving. Mm -hmm. right. And what does mm -hmm. that mean? And how does that look? Mm -hmm. I think, so I, I, I hope that that's a part of, Absolutely. you know, the awakening or the mm -hmm. understanding or the revelation mm -hmm. of, of, what's, of, what, of what ultimately mm -hmm. um, takes place in that. Um, where do you guys think, um, you know, in terms of, of how um, we're moving, you know, uh, in, in terms of ministry and people are, are, are seeing a whole bunch of things happening? Where do you see um, technology taking us? Oh, wow. I mean, because it's, <laughs> yo, I mean, right. Right. Well, we're not going back. <laughs> right. We're not, we're right. not going we, back. Right. We, we so, can't. Right. Right. <laughs> right. I, right. Hmm. I'm excited because <laughs> technology is what's saving the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had so many people who were naysayers of the church who were concerned about, you know, what does it mean? I, 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 I'm struggling with, you know, the place of technology. I'm struggling with credit card machines in the church. I'm struggling with, you know, the streaming and stuff and all of this. And now we're realizing that most churches that are still surviving today are doing it because of those very things. Right. The fact that we have Givelify is a means that is allowing New Calvary to do ministry and continue to stay afloat. The mm -hmm. idea of having streaming devices, we're coming to you now having Bible study based upon a means and a medium that we did not have in the past. And so it's really important that we embrace the technology and it needs to be a both and, both right. and embrace. Right. Mm -hmm. Where we can still celebrate what is church traditional, right. but we also need to celebrate how that medium is met right. through technology. Right. I think we have to embrace it. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. right. I mean, we we're not going back. So it's right. a matter of how do we continue? Right. Right. How do we improve our technology? Right. Um, you know, like us getting the new equipment. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and the in the sanctuary. So when we do go back. You know, we're going to have new equipment, new cameras. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about using all the platforms, Facebook, YouTube, mm -hmm. Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the good thing is that technology is broadening our church. Mm -hmm. So we're not just new Calvary here in the four walls, but we're able to reach people all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, right. it's, it's broadening our our witness. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But technology, technology, I think, has been definitely helpful because we're, we're cutting back on resources mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Um, and so, you know, we're <coughs> Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting after mm -hmm. Zoom meeting. Right. So that's that has been <laughs> it's been helpful to be in the, in the comfort of our of our homes and to still interact and connect with one another that way, as opposed to having to come here to the to our churches and 
you know, turn on the lights and security has to be present. And so, you know, when you look at technology, it's, it's about resources as well. Um, being able to do it innovatively for kids. The kids love technology. And so how do we do children's church and ch children's church and youth ministry um, through technology? And so a lot of them are on TikTok and Instagram. And so that's a way for them to connect and have fun at the same time and learn and engage. And so there's there are a lot of benefits to to technology once we kind of learn the technology. It is it's a growing edge for a lot of people. I had a girlfriend mm -hmm. who kind of kept saying, um, you know, these churches who don't have technology, they just need to close. And I said, well, no, you have to allow grace. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Southampton County. I'm from the country. And so there are a lot mm -hmm. of people who don't have. Right. You know? <laughs> no, I'm saying, yeah, don't right. have. Not from the country part. Uh, okay. Uh, but there are a lot of people who don't have, you know, access to internet. And the church is pivotal for even children who are trying to do their homework in a community mm -hmm. who lack access. And so we got to be, you know, mindful of, you know, the perks of technology. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think those who, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes you know, people have their passive resistance, mm -hmm. um, but circumstances force people to do things, mm -hmm. um, and you know, it just is what it is. And I mm -hmm. think this is one of those seasons. Mm -hmm. I think that those who really did not understand, right, the use for technology, mm -hmm. right. Um, under get it right, right. right. Um, you know, and, and, no and, and, right at right. the very least, see the need, right? right. right. Um, we were, uh, you know, you talk about no tea, no shade. I'm about to blast <laughs> my father. Um, yesterday, my brother got this idea. He was like, "Yo, let's get the brothers and the kids mm -hmm. on Zoom," mm -hmm. right? So my almost eighty year old father, you know, who was fairly savvy, um, you know, you know is trying to get on the Zoom, and we see his name, but no picture and no voice. And so everybody is on the phone talking to him, trying to get him, you know, to get right. the Zoom connected. And he finally was like, you know what, well, that's all right. We'll, we'll give me a tutorial, and I'll work on it next time. You know what I'm saying? And so, but, but it was like, yo, this is a venue mm -hmm. to where everybody can connect. Right. Right? right? So, so, you know, it, it, it speaks to... You know, my nephew, my mm -hmm. daughter, mm -hmm. talking to their grandfather, mm -hmm. saying, Pop, Pop, this is what you do. And then, well, look at this button and, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it creates this connection and mm -hmm. this relationship mm -hmm. that, you know, can really foster greater development, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so there are things that, that can be learned. And mm -hmm. I think that sometimes the older generation has a problem, small p, with learning from another generation, mm -hmm. right? right? You know, being the authority and the expert mm -hmm. can, is sometimes troubling, but it, it creates this space and this opportunity um, for us to grow and and ultimately connect. I, you know, I, I'm not long arming myself, pat myself on the back, but I have been saying, yo, we need to get streaming rolling. I've been mm -hmm. saying that for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. now, nobody knew anything about a pandemic. Mm -hmm. right? right. I was trying to get it out there, you know, so the world could see New Calvary functioning and doing what they do, right. you know, but now it just fits and it works. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And people are like, yeah, well, you know, that works better, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, and it can happen because somebody who might not otherwise get online mm -hmm. was like, Yo, I'm going to miss church. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> you know, right. I'm, right. I'm going to miss the event if right. I don't right. make that right. connection. So Absolutely. it does have, you know, I, I think, I think people are learning, mm -hmm. you know, now whether they learn it kicking and screaming, right. you know, <laughs> whether they learn it, you know, with their arms folded right. and right. hate erasing, right. but right. you know, at their own pace, I think, I think it's still learning. Mm -hmm. So, um, so let's look last, last question tonight. Um, you know, uh, what is, what's the best way you think, um, in your estimation that, that you guys do what you do, that the church can give a sense of hope and teach or understand peace, um, in these times and try to give some concrete examples if you can, what's, what's the best ways you think, um, that that can, that, that the church can help with that and, and ministers help. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll leave, I'll give y'all room for that church slash ministers, clergy, you know, that kind of thing. He, he jumped. He was jumping. He, the center man was jumping every time. Right. I, like, I wasn't jumping. He was taking my time. He was taking my time. Go ahead, Donna McDonald. Okay. So, 
best way, I think some of the things that we have been doing here at New Calvary, uh, one thing is trying to understand the resources that are out there to help people uh, to be a place where, you know, we may not have the resource, but we know who does. So, you know, let us know that what you need and we're going to try to find out who who can who can connect you with the right source of whatever you need. Um, so I think that is definitely one way. I think as a minister, so I started doing a spiritual lift mm -hmm. on Thursdays, uh, a little two to five minute segment. Mm -hmm. um, but that was from my own personal uh, space of ministry in which at the time um, when I was on Facebook and other platforms, everybody was talking about, oh, this is the time to do what you said you were wanted to do. This is the time to write your business plan. This is the time to do all of this. Well, I wasn't feeling that. I was feeling grief. Mm -hmm. And so from that perspective, that's how I started the spiritual lifts of, you know, trying to work through some of my own stuff mm -hmm. and hoping that would help other people. And so, you know, I talked about grace. I talked about um, hope. I talk about grief and uh, try to give concrete examples of how mm -hmm. to over overcome those things. Mm -hmm. And so I think as ministry, I think it's an understanding of uh, what you bring to the table mm -hmm. and then getting that out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's going to help other people. Mm -hmm. It's not a time just to sit and say, oh, well, the church is closed. I can't preach. I can't do this. I can't do that and just sit around and do nothing. Mm -hmm. But what are your gifts and how can how can you let your light shine? One of the things I think is very interesting about that question is uh, Heidi Farrell last week, uh, when we were talking about what was the role and the function of the mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. she shared that uh, to some and, I, and I'm paraphrasing, so get, sure, don't give me the church is a the church's role and function really has not changed, yeah. um, and with the introduction of technology and all these different things and these pandemics and all of this. Still, we have an obligation and a responsibility to be a space of safety, yes. a space of sanctuary, a space of healing, a space of liberation. Mm -hmm. And so to Dr. McDonald's point, that's the idea, that's the responsibility mm -hmm. of the connection, right? Mm -hmm. So how are we creating these spaces of, uh, of safety? How are we creating these spaces of reconnection? And so the challenge for theologians, the challenge is for, for I, I will own it for myself, I'll use good chaplaincy terms, I believe that my role and function will be to connect both the idea of the traditional role of the church that we find in the book of Acts to the experiences that we're experiencing post-pandemic COVID-19. And so that means that Byron's going to have to take on the responsibility of doing a both-and situation, right. a both-and in that. It's not only about creating the space of technology, but it's about marrying technology so that we can see how the technology is going to bless. And I'm going to use them as an example because I'm impressed by them, how the Brotherhood is able to have their meetings and we're able to see Deacon Shannon and Deacon Allen on the Zoom meeting, sharing and sharing their thoughts and their ideas in the comfort of their home and inspiring us to do great things. Because what happens is you'll see the proof is in the pudding because you can look outside when you come past a church and see that the landscaping has been done with the landscape landscaping ministry and the brotherhood and that happened via zoom conversations and meetings and so that's going to be the challenge i think going forward yeah. um i echo those same sentiments <laughs> uh, great 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 um great thoughts of course um but I, I do also think that part of the responsibility for the church is again to create this space of um like you said safety mm -hmm. and respite for a lot of people the reality is um that we're still dealing with the we're still dealing with life issues, the harshness of life and life still goes on. And so being able to provide a place where people can come without judgment and say, you know, I'm short this month for my light bill and I need help and, and it's and, and that we're there and responding as much as possible. Or I just need a place where I can come and talk. And so there may be a need for a small group. Mm -hmm. You know, um, to have those small groups where people have similar interests or they're having um, similar situations where they can come and feel like I'm connected mm -hmm. to someone um, during this time frame. Because a lot of times um, people just the, the, it's, it's a lot to navigate, you mm -hmm. know, especially for someone who's the, the non-believer. Um, you know, research has shown that typically in a time of crisis. People come running to church and running back mm -hmm. to church and, and trying to connect their faith. And so I think it's going to be crucial 
for the church to have space for people to come and share their thoughts and their feelings and how they're grieving loss of security or how they're looking for hope um, or just to be connected to something, mm -hmm. you know, that's fun and energetic that kind of keeps them going and stimulated. So yeah. um, small groups or like we do the grief sessions. I think all of those things are, are helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think um, as I think about it, I think what is going to happen is one all for what you guys have said, but it's going to be the church is going to have to really labor to build the bridge to applicable life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say skill, but life execution, right? Mm -hmm. How does now more than ever, the church is going to be challenged to say, how does this mm -hmm. message that you give Sunday after Sunday, where people come in a lot of times just to feel good, to kind of sanitize and anesthetize for a minute, how is this going to apply to my life? And people struggle with that. And I'm not saying we don't, New Calvary don't do that. But what I'm saying is it's going to have to be much more concrete, mm -hmm. right? Because it's going to have to be so much more in your face because the interaction is going to be through mm -hmm. different venues. Mm -hmm. So the church is going to have to really, really be creative in how we talk about bridging the message we talk about, the Jesus we talk about, the hope, the liberation, the empowerment mm -hmm. that we talk about into practical ways, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The partnerships that happen virtually with food banks mm -hmm. and hospitals mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mental health, mm -hmm. you know, groups. I mean, those kinds of things are going to have to be really, really concrete mm -hmm. um, and force, again, just like the technology part, force the church to be imaginative, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and how yeah. they do that, um, because quite literally their lives are going to depend on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it's no longer going to be about um, when you have sixteen cooking cha shows on TV, mm -hmm. right? I can watch anyone I want at any given moment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When you got three hundred and fifty churches <laughs> on TV, mm -hmm. right? same thing applies. Mm -hmm. So what's going to set you different, mm -hmm. right? In terms of how you do ministry, mm -hmm. right? Not how you do church, not how you do your worship setting, right? But how you do ministry, the worship setting will have its place in all those kinds of mm -hmm. things. But at the end of the day, how do I live? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because, oh, that's, that's really what, yeah. you know, yeah. is, is we hitting that rubber yeah. meets the road kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I think that is the question. You know, mm -hmm. that is that is the relevant question that all of society is asking right now, whether you are a Christian, whether mm -hmm. you are whatever your faith practice, you have no faith practice. Mm -hmm. How do I survive? Mm -hmm. right. How do I survive with a presidential leader that I have no faith in? Right. How do I survive? And it's not to say that we haven't had leaders in the past that we questioned, you know, mm -hmm question them in their judgment right. however there is something we got a lot more questions now right but there, <laughs> it has, it has been on. exacerbated by the pandemic it's right. been exacerbated right. by the current events and the state of affairs so people are coming thirsty right for a means of connection and a means mm -hmm. of being able to feel that they can have a way of sustaining and then like mm -hmm. you said again i think that's going to be the the the, the angle mm -hmm. for the church to go forward is to, is to make that live as you say pastor mm -hmm. how are we gonna make it live right right, make it live. right. Yeah. all right well listen we're grateful for you sharing and uh I hope we hope you're blessed by it um you know if this was a church setting i'd say new calvary well, you're blessed today. Yeah. Uh, um, and so uh, we hope indeed this was a blessing. We hope the conversation was good. I uh, just want to wrap with you real quick with a few things um, this Sunday. Well, first, let me let me just say tomorrow, please don't forget your throwback uh, Thursday photos, your vid videos of New Calvary throughout the years, mm -hmm. your pictures, whatever you can post, uh, blast from the past. Please make sure you can explain them as much as possible. We know who's in them, the photos and the pictures. If not, um, then go ahead and just record a statement from you or for you, by you, saying what New Calvary means to you. Uh, so we want to make sure that we do that. Uh, we want to celebrate Sunday. Uh, the 24th at 8 a.m. So we're asking you, listen to me. We need you here. If you're coming to the park and praise, we need you here at 730. 
please be here at 7.30 so we can organize everything. We want everything to be organized. This is not a fashionably late Sunday this, because nobody's <laughs> going to see your outfit anyway. So this is not a fashionably late Sunday. So make sure you're here at 7.30 so we can organize, so we can get on the air at 8 o'clock sharp, 8 a.m. sharp, uh, because we want to uh, have that worship. Women's Connection will be hosting the virtual <laughs> Zoom meeting. Um, uh, this upcoming Saturday, uh, May 23rd, uh, at 11 a.m. Yeah. They're going to do a How You Live in Women's Edition. Yes. Okay. So they're going to do that again. That's May 23rd at 11 a.m. That's going to be virtual Zoom. Um, and Brotherhood Landscaping, we want to thank you again. Uh, Executive Pastor B already mentioned that, uh, working together to beautify uh, our landscape and putting that together. So thumbs up to y'all. Put the hearts up. Thumbs up to that. Uh, please show your appreciation. Um, and we are still on the radio. We're grateful for that. Still on the radio, 8 a.m. on Sunday um, with uh, FM 92.5. Uh, 104.9 and 1270 and 1650 on your AM dial. Amen. Let's watch me work out. Watch me work out. Come on, DJ. We all over the place. We all over the wall. We all over the radio. All over the radio. And getting some good feedback in regards to that, too. So we're grateful for that. Um, And so just be mindful uh, of all that we're going to do as we look forward to celebrate this 86th anniversary, y'all. We're grateful for 86 years of ministry here at New Calvary Baptist Church, so you can put your thumbs and your likes up for that. Uh, listen to here. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 33 says, For God is not a God of confusion, mm-hmm. um, but of peace, as in all the church, uh, the churches of the saints. And so we don't want you to be confused. We know you may be distressed, but understand, God wants clarity for your life. God wants you to understand and to walk in this thing in a sense of peace that God is continuing to bless you and God has planned and greater. And like uh, Executive Pastor B likes to say, there will be glory after, after this. this. And so we're grateful yeah. to see you. So thank uh, our panel. Next week, we got something for you. We look like we're going to have a guest, I think, if Reverend Harris didn't tell no fib. We're going to have a guest with us, um, sharing with us, and we're going to have a guest on our virtual. We'll be blessed. Uh, but we're going to see you next time. So until then, next Wednesday uh, for our virtual Bible study, thank you. Yo, Reverend Williams, shout out to you, man. Reverend Gene Gibson, shout out to you, man. Appreciate y'all for checking in. All of y'all who checked in, we appreciate it. See you next time. Be good. Peace.